This tutorial explains a few things to think about when preparing and managing the files that you use with your SAT. When most users start using Live, they begin by importing audio files from the position where they're currently located in the music library. However, once you start building your SAT properly, it makes sense to create a dedicated folder to keep all of your Live audio files within. The reason for this is so you can easily organise and back up the whole folder in one go. For example, on my computer I save all my files into a folder called Ableton Files, which is located on the desktop. Within this folder I have subfolders for files of similar types such as techno, dubstep, reggae and breaks. This means that whenever I need to find a certain live file, I immediately know where to look for it. Now let's talk about file formats. Live supports a number of different audio file types, and these can be split into two main categories uncompressed and compressed files. Uncompressed file types supported are WAV, AIF, SD2 on the Mac, and REX files, which contain information on slice points. Compressed files supported are MP3, AAC, MP4, OGG FLAC, OGG Vortus, and FLAC. Now in reality, Live actually only supports uncompressed audio files, so whenever you import a compressed file, the program has to make an uncompressed version of the file before it can be played. This file is saved into a folder called the decoding cache. So in practice, this means that every time you import in an MP3, Live puts an additional uncompressed WAV file onto your hard drive. As a result of this, if you're trying to protect hard drive space by saving files as MP3s, then actually you're not. When Live opens the file, it decodes it and then you end up with two files on the hard drive, taking up more space than simply saving it as an uncompressed file in the first place. It's especially important to be aware of this if you use an external hard drive to save all your music onto. You may find that every time you import in an MP3, your decoding cache is filling up your laptop's hard drive without you realising it. Resaving compressed files is a simple process by using an audio editor or file converter program. Use the highest quality setting available and save them as a 16-bit 44.1 kHz WAV or AIFF file. If you want to know more about using audio editors, watch the tutorial recording off vinyl and using an audio editor. To see the options that relate to the decoding cache, go to Preferences and the File Folder tab. You can limit how large you allow the decoding cache to become by turning on the maximum cache size. However, I'd recommend leaving this function off unless you're running low with disk space. The button marked Cleanup allows you to remove all the files from the decoding cache that are not used in the current project. By pressing Browse, you can change whereabouts on the hard drive the decoding cache is saved. Let's shut Preferences now. When discussing which file formats to use, it's worth considering the quality of audio file to use in the first place. If you plan to use MP3s that have been downloaded from the internet, then always aim to get files that are 320 kilobytes per second. This will sound very close in quality to an uncompressed file, and most people won't notice the difference. However, if you frequently play MP3s of a lower quality, then you need to be careful. Some compressed files are very obvious when turned up loud, whilst others don't sound too bad. If in doubt, try turning the file up on the best set of speakers you can, and see if the clarity of sound, and particularly the bass, is OK. When buying music, some download sites now sell tracks in WAV form, and although this is generally more expensive, it's worth spending the extra money for CD quality sound. You may find that some of the files you have downloaded from online music stores are protected with digital rights management. This unfortunately means that Live won't be able to play them. To get around this, what you need to do is burn the file onto an audio CD, and then rip it back to the computer. It can then be saved and imported into Live as normal. Despite the previous comments around trying to avoid compressed files, when playing Live, MP3s can be very practical to have available. For example, if you get a request for a track that you have somewhere in your MP3 collection, the easiest way is to drag the file straight in without worrying about uncompressing it. However, when you're organising your set at home and have the extra time, it's worthwhile uncompressing your files. One of the best ways to get tracks to use in your set is to rip them off CD. 
This guarantees that the sound quality will be good and it only takes a few seconds to do. You can use an audio editor such as SoundForge and WaveLab or a media player like iTunes and Windows Media Player. Again, avoid saving the tracks as compressed files and instead save them as 16-bit 44.1 kHz WAV or AIFF files. If you wish to save hard drive space but not lose any sound quality, then consider which tracks you're not currently using within your set and save them as FLAC files. These take up approximately half the space of WAV files but will need uncompressing before they can be used in live. If you decide to rip tracks from mix CDs, then be aware that the start and end of each track will contain the section where the DJ was mixing it. These tracks are still usable, but may require further editing down or a bit more time spent preparing them to avoid any unwanted sounds. If you wish to record tracks off vinyl, then refer to the tutorial on recording off vinyl and using an audio editor. When you import an audio file, Live creates an analysis file which stores all additional information such as warp markers, envelopes and loop points. It takes a few seconds before this is ready to use and it's saved in the same folder as the audio file with the suffix .asd. You can tell when a file has already been analysed because it will have a tick next to its name in the file browser. You can analyse all of the files in the same folder by right clicking on the folder and selecting Analyze Audio. Don't forget though that this will create a decoded file for every compressed file in the folder, so be aware of trying to do your entire MP3 collection in one go. Once you've analysed all of your audio files and set warp markers, loop points and the like, the last thing you should do is get into the habit of pressing the save button in Clip View. This saves all of the current clip settings with the audio file meaning that if you import the clip into a different project, all the settings will remain the same. You can also highlight multiple clips at once so that you can save them all simultaneously. Whenever you're working, you should also get into the habit of regularly pressing Save Live Set in case Live crashes at any point. The keyboard shortcut for this is Control or Command S. There's another option here called Collect All and Save which will save your entire set, including all your audio files, to a new folder. This function is useful if you want to move your set to a different computer or if you want to consolidate all your files into one place. The Manage Files command is also here, which allows you to find missing files or determine the location of all the files in your project. Finally, at any point when you spend a significant length of time working live, you should back up your entire set onto DVD or an external hard drive. Backing up is sometimes seen as an afterthought, but considering how long it takes to plan and put your set together, five minutes when you finish working is time well spent. You should now understand more about using files within Live. This is the end of the tutorial.